everybody! Welcome back to another Crafting with me, Aviva, your art director from the Ed Asner Family Center! Today we are making something that I've always wanted to try with you guys. It is a little bit messier than some of our usual projects, but that just makes it a little bit more fun. Um, today we are going to be making acrylic pores. I don't know if you guys have ever done it, but I'd like to try it maybe sometime during our summer class when we can go outside. It is getting a little bit chilly outside, but this is totally fine inside if you have a nice piece of plastic or newspaper that you can put above your table or a nice tray as well. You can, I got these for like $1 at the dollar store. Super easy to use. Um, I'm gonna talk about some of our materials that we're gonna be needing today. We are going to be needing Specifically, this is the only thing that you might not have in your house, but it's also the most important for acrylic pours. So this is called pouring medium. You can buy this online, anywhere. You can buy it at the craft store, but pouring medium is basically like our helper ingredient for getting a nice liquidy consistency for our paint. Because what an acrylic pour is, is basically filling a cup or multiple cups with a bunch of different colors, putting our cup, our canvas on top of our cup and flipping it over so that once we let go of our cup, this beautiful tie-dye rainbow magic explosion ends up happening. And it's so fun and anyone could do it. It's gonna be beautiful no matter what. Colors are beautiful no matter what. I mean, mixing will happen, but if you're using a pouring medium, it'll be super helpful to prevent colors from mixing, and also this thing called crazing that ends up happening during acrylic pours. So basically crazing is when cracks happen in the drying process and crevices appear, and we don't want that to happen. We want a nice smooth finish. So to prevent that, we're using our um, pouring medium. All right, pouring medium, tray, plastic. I am using nice two little mini canvases today if you want to go bigger that's fine you don't even have to use canvases like a wooden plank is fine anything with a nice coarse kind of surface you know we don't want to use anything like glass because that can end up chipping off over time we really want to make our paintings last a long time um so speaking about paint we are going to be needing acrylic paint today um, there's other types of paints that you can get online that are a little bit more fancy and they're for specifically acrylic pouring, but we are going to just be using regular paint. So you guys can, so it shows you guys that you guys can use it with the materials that you have at home. And then finally, you're going to need multiple plastic cups or regular cups. Um, that are reusable if you're willing to do all that cleanup, which right now I'm a little bit too lazy to do, to be honest. So doing plastic today <laughs> all right and finally I've got this little jar here but it doesn't have to be a jar we're using this jar to basically elevate our canvas off of the tray that we have underneath so that when it pours when we make our pour it can kind of just drip off and do what it likes as it comes and flows you know but also it makes it easy for us to pick it up afterwards when it's dry okay I'm excited okay let's do it so I am gonna get started by placing my canvas here and just kind of moving it to the side okay you could also save this part for later but for now we're gonna start our mixing process so I'm gonna start by taking my cup and I am going to be showing you the amount that you are going to be needing. Specifically, we're going to be learning two different ways to do an acrylic pour, okay? So our first way that we're going to be learning how to do our acrylic pours is this method called um, a uh, dirty pour. We're gonna learn how to do a dirty pour and we're also gonna learn how to do a straight pour, okay? We're gonna start with the straight pour because that's like a little bit more clean and then the dirty pour helps us kind of mix those colors together and make that beautiful tie-dye effect. Um, but come on with me, let's start mixing. 
So what we're going to need for our mixture today is obviously our pouring, um, pouring liquid and our acrylic paint. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding about um, one third of acrylic paint and two thirds of my pouring medium, okay? So what we're going to be doing is putting in our pouring medium first and then our acrylic paint and then mixing that together. I'm not really measuring it and because you know everyone's canvases are different sizes and so it just depends on how big your canvas is because you don't want to pour too much paint because that's just a waste. So I'm just gonna pour in my acrylic. Okay, and now I also have these lovely paint spatulas here, and that's just gonna help us give it a little bit of a mix. Okay. There you go. So now that we've got our mixture all worked out, I'm gonna mix the rest of my paint colors that I'm going to be using, and then we're gonna come back together and we're gonna make some art, okay? All right, I have all of my colors mixed together now. I'm gonna go for kind of like a rainbowy look just so we can get some really nice, vibrant colors going on. Let's see, got them all mixed up. Um, the pouring medium in, is in there. So before we actually start pouring, we're gonna do the process of choosing one color to be our base cup. So I'm just gonna do purple. And then what we're going to be doing is we are going to be taking our canvas, okay? It's already elevated with our little jar there. You can use anything. You don't wanna use a cup, that might be a little bit too high up. But anything that has a nice flat surface, make sure it doesn't fall off, you know? So for our straight pour, you're going to be taking your cups and instead of combining them, like you see a lot of pours online, we're going to be just pouring it straight onto the canvas. Just like this, so purple. You can do the whole thing if you'd like. And then I'm gonna just try and do it in rainbow order. Green. And it's just so satisfying to do this, to just watch all the colors spill. Nice light green. And you see it's starting to move. So you, with straight pores specifically, they're gonna start spilling to a side, okay? And that's okay because you can actually tilt the canvas and move it whichever way you like, okay? Because as it dries too, you'll see that it kind of shows some of the colors that are underneath as well. Colors start emerging from all the bubbles that happen. So pretty. And so now I can take my canvas and slightly move it around. What you can also do is take your spatula or a toothpick and kind of help it out by just spreading it to the edges to get that finished look. But as time goes on, our painting is going to change and it's gonna do its magic all on its own. But this one, you can help it out. You can add some other colors to the middle. You can, I'm, I'm really just trying to spread it all the way out to the edge here to give it that nice finished look, just like that. And you can even see Right here, look how beautiful that is. At the end of your painting, you could just kind of peel that off and that's just beautiful on its own. You can put that behind a frame and <laughs> call it art too if you'd like. Ooh, so now I'm gonna like, what you can also do is take some from the side and scoop it up and drip it along. Kind of looks like little mini planets with this green and blue. So pretty. You could also take a toothpick too and work some magic in the middle. Let's see if we can add another color here by scooping down. I'm gonna give it a little swirl texture. 
See, and you can do whatever you like with this. It's so relaxing to just let that pour, watch that paint kind of just fall off the edges here. And you know, we'll check in on this at the end of the show to see if it's changed at all, okay? But this was our straight pour. It was called a straight pour because we're just going straight on to the canvas. And you'll see on our next canvas that it's a little bit different when it comes to dirty pour. So I'm gonna put this to the side so we can start on our next canvas, okay? All right, so now that we are done with our straight pour, we're gonna try out a dirty pour, okay? So what we're going to be doing is instead of pouring it straight onto the canvas, we're going to be finding a base cup to kind of fill in layers all of the colors that we have, okay? And you know, it's not gonna be perfect layers, but you'll see when we pour it, it'll kind of, other colors will show through and also, these little cell shapes might end up start happening, but let's see what happens, okay? Sometimes it doesn't happen. Ooh, once again, I'm gonna choose my purple as my base. I'm gonna just move this out of the side here. So here's our purple. And I am gonna do the same kind of pattern, but we're gonna see how they, it turns out a little bit differently depending on how we pour, okay? So going in with my purple and my blue. Blue. And we're going to save a little bit in case I want to add a few extra colors to the top. Green. Light green. And this nice lime color. Yellow. And so once again, our pouring medium is kind of what's stopping the paints from really turning into like a nasty brown color, you know? Okay, orange, red, and pink. All righty. So now that I got my little extra bit of paint in these cups to the side, what I'm going to do is, it's probably a little easier if you stand up to do this. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your canvas and you're going to, let's scooch this up. You're gonna place it over your cup, just like this. <laughs> you're gonna put a hand over your cup, making sure that's right in the middle. And you are gonna just do a nice flip. Okay, I'm gonna place it back on my little holder and I'm gonna just very carefully lift it up. One, two, three. <gasps> wow, and you see those bubbles that are happening? It's those air pockets that were stuck inside. And let's see, let's just watch it. You can see that these little cells that I was talking about, when you kind of, when air is stuck inside the paint, it ends up making these little circly shapes. And so I'm gonna get my spatula out and just kind of let it start spilling this way. Look how beautiful it is right there. Wowee. So you really don't wanna tilt this one that much cause it might mess up some of your sp little cell shapes that end up happening here. But you can use your spatula to kind of stretch it out. And if you notice that some of the colors are blending together, that's okay. You can also use this time to add your extra paint to the top to give it a little bit more of a flare. So I'm gonna add a little bit more blue. Maybe a little bit more orange. Some yellow. And that looks good for now. And I want you to see that as we put it to the side, we're, it's gonna just change. And it's, even after this video is over, this is gonna keep on changing. This is gonna take quite some time to dry. 
So what you're going to want to do is just put it inside in a nice shaded area. If you put it in the sun, you will have some cracks and crevices, you know, and we don't want that to happen. But also I want you to notice, you see these little, like the, the like cell shapes that I was talking about? One way that you can kind of like hack the system and make more of those little circles is by using some rubbing alcohol. Here I have some, I have some hand sanitizer today and that'll also work too because of all of the alcohol and the sanitizer, but you're gonna just take it and if you have a dropper, that's even better. And you are gonna just do a few drops and let's see what happens. A few drops. And as you see, when the drops happen very slowly, it starts kind of like eating its way through the paint. Of course, when you have rubbing alcohol, it's got a little bit more alcohol in it, but it should kind of poke through some layers of paint and get some other colors that might be hidden behind some of the top parts, okay? I'm gonna also try and give it a little spray and see what happens. We're gonna do a little bit of an experiment here. I'm gonna spray from a high distance though. Very cool. So this is it. So you see some of our colors did mix, but that's okay. I really am loving some of these colors that poke out and I also love that all of our canvases are going to be different. So if you go home and you wanna try some acrylic pores, I'd love to see how yours turned out because yours is not gonna look like mine. Yours is gonna look like yours and that's gonna be even better because we're gonna be able to have a full gallery of acrylic pores. This is such an easy, fun, a little bit messy experiment for us to do together. And also, it's gonna be warming up soon. Go outside, lay a blanket down on some cement. You don't want it to be a bumpy surface or your paint's gonna go here and there. But that's gonna be it today, you know? I'm gonna have a little side-by-side -side at the end of this video so you guys can see how it's changed throughout this time of being, of me chit-chatting away to you guys. But this is gonna be it. This is our show, and thank you so much for joining me. I had so much fun crafting with you guys. I always do every Saturday. I also want you guys to know that Sundays I have a painting class that I host from 11.30 to 1. Please come, please come get painty with me. We're also incredibly safe and separated and we're just having a good time and listening to some music and making some beautiful stuff. Also on Wednesdays, we host a music and art class with me and Judy Langdon, our music art, uh, <laughs> music art director, music director and therapist. And we have so much fun. That's from 4.30 to six. So come join us, get crafty, get musical, and let's have a good time, okay? I'll see you guys next Saturday. Goodbye.